Hello there, my beautiful kittens. In this, we're going to be doing a tier list for Sean Yoon's best weapons. Um, Just as usual, we're just going to be ranking the current catalysts in the game in a tier list based around which of them are the best for Sean Yoon. So yeah, let's begin. All right, so first of all, we're going to see what she needs in a catalyst. Um, So generally, this is going to be built around her like support build. This is not for a main DPS build, otherwise it's going to be a little different. But for a support build, generally speaking, all of her like main things like her um, plunging bonus and her heal and stuff like that are going to scale with attack so you're just going to need any weapons that are going to give you attack either like a high base attack or attack percentage or whatever any weapons that can give you attack are going to be pretty good um then after that the second thing she needs is going to be energy recharge um she's going to struggle a little bit with energy so it's generally you're going to need energy either from your weapon or your artifacts which is your sands so it really depends like the priority between them is going to differ if you already have like an energy recharge sands then you probably don't want an energy recharge weapon if you don't then in that case an energy recharge weapon is going to be better so i would say they're like around the same priority it just depends on your artifact but yeah those are like the main things she needs really just attack and energy recharge other than that crit and stuff like that is kind of whatever so yeah with that being said let's move on and rank the weapons all right so starting off with the magic guide just low base attack three star weapon elemental mastery it's probably going to tier you have the thrill and tails it's a low base attack and an hp substat but the passive is actually pretty good it's going to give the next character in the field a huge attack bonus and it fits like with her like general supportive role i would say so even though it's not a good weapon for sean yun herself it's a good like role weapon as like a support weapon so it definitely can be used it's gonna buff your you know main dps that you're trying to buff even more definitely wouldn't really say it's all that though i wouldn't really recommend using it maybe you can use it on another character whatever but generally speaking it works so i'd say it's b tier wouldn't really say it's a or s tier because it doesn't really work like that for sean yun herself but it's definitely a usable weapon generally uh otherworldly story energy recharge but the base attack's kind of low either way though honestly i would say it's kind of usable so i would put it at like very low b tier you, you definitely don't really want to be using this weapon there are like other better energy recharge free to play weapons but as a weapon it still works just for the energy recharge substat so yeah i put it at like very low b tier it's like lower than average but it's definitely usable we have the emerald orb um elemental mastery so probably like d tier i would say same thing with the twin nephri um it's just crit rate so it's d tier and then finally amber's bed um i would say d tier too now moving on to the four star weapons we have the favonius codex it's gonna give you a decent base stack for four stars like average and then energy recharges substat which is very important and then also even more energy the favonius passive so it's definitely a very very good weapon for her i mean honestly i would say it's as good as it gets um it's just like kind of eliminates the energy problems so as i said before a, a weapon can be good if it like gives you a lot of energy or a lot of attack this weapon gives you a lot of energy so honestly i would say it deserves s tier the low base stack is kind of, you know, lacking a little bit. So I wouldn't really say it's top of S tier. I put it like lower S tier. Nevertheless, it's definitely one of her best weapons though. So yeah, and it's also free to play. We've got the wit set. Um, it, it's not really all of that. Grid damage is subs that average base attack. And then the passive is just the random wit set passive. I'd say C tier is probably the right place. We've got the sacrificial, um, low base stack for four star elemental mastery. And then you have the sacrificial passive. You might be able to gain some extra energy, but it's not really usable, I would say. It's definitely not the weapon you don't want to use so i'd say c tier is probably the right place we've got the royal grimoire high base stack for a four star and then also attack as a substat the passive is useless it's just a royal passive which is whatever but the base stats are actually pretty good so i would honestly i would say it's probably like b tier it's definitely usable solar pearl average base stack for a four star crit rate is a substat the passive is completely irrelevant though um probably c tier i would say we've got the prototype amber average base stack and then hp as substat which is useless but the passive is pretty good it's just going to give you energy and also heal your party members which kind of also fits with her role so i would say it's definitely a decent weapon though um definitely not s tier just because of like the wasted hp passive but it's definitely a very good weapon still so i would say it's a tier a tier is the right place got the mapa mare kind of high base set for four star but it's just elemental mastery and then also useless passive um elemental damage bonus and that but it just not really as useful so i'd say it's probably c tier we've got the black cliff um average base stack crit damage is a substat the passive is the black cliff passive so if you defeat an enemy it's gonna give you attack thing is you probably wouldn't really be defeating enemies as much with support sean yun so i would say usually it's kind of a useless passive which puts this weapon at c tier i would say we've got eye of perception low base stack but it's gonna give you attack as a substat so it kind of makes up for it the rest of the passive is pretty much useless um just for the attack i would say it's like b tier 
tier. It's not even that much attack anyways, but it's definitely usable. So yeah, I'd say B tier is the right place. We've got the Wine and Song, a high base sack for four star weapon, then also NG recharge and substat. And then from the passive is also if you sprint, it's going to give you a 20% attack increase at R1 for five seconds. So it gives you pretty much everything you need. I know the attack increase is kind of a sh for like a short period of time, so it's kind of whatever, but it still gives you a high base attack and then NG recharge the substat, which is super good. So honestly, I would say it's definitely one of our best weapons too. I would honestly put it like lower S tier too. If you have this weapon, it's definitely a good weapon for her. We have the Frost Bear, um, average base attack for four star, then attack as a substat. Passive is completely useless pretty much. So it just gives you attack pretty much. Honestly, I would say it's like higher B tier maybe just for like the decent amount of attack, but that's about it. We've got the Dodoka Tails, low base attack, but attack as a substat. So that's decent. The rest of the passive though is kind of useless on Sean Yun. So yeah, um, I'd say lower B tier. Lower B tier is probably the right place. We've got the Action Ring. It's pretty much the same thing as the Wine and Song in the base stats. High base sack and then NGRE charge as a substat. Um, the passive though is also kind of like situational. It's going to give damage bonus to the rest of your party members, which is good. But you need to like swirl the element and stuff like that. So it might not work in some teams. Generally, the passive though is kind of useless, but the weapon is definitely pretty good. So I'd say it's on the same boat with the Wine and Song. I'd also put it like S tier. I know these weapons don't really fit like exactly pretty well with Sean Yun as like 100%. But like if you look at the rest of the weapons, that's like the best you can get, generally speaking. So that's why I would say that's like S tier material. There's not many like much better weapons. You have the Outsworn Eye, high base attack, and then attack as a substat, which is pretty good. And then the passive is going to give you a decent amount of energy recharge after you use your elemental skill. Um, Especially with refinements, it's definitely going to be a super, super good weapon. But even at R1, it's definitely going to work. So yeah, honestly, I would say it's S tier material too. For fulfillment, um, kind of an average base attack, and then energy recharge as a substat, which is pretty good. The passive is pretty bad though. It's even gonna lower your attack, which is super bad. So I definitely wouldn't really recommend using this weapon. I put it like C tier, just for the bad passive. We have the Sacrificial Jade, low base attack, and crit rate as a substat. The passive is just HP and elemental mastery. Um, probably D tier, I would say. It's definitely not as good. We have the Flow Impurity, high base attack for a four star, and then attack as a substat, which is pretty good. Passive is just like some elemental damage bonus, which is also pretty decent. Decent weapon overall. Um, wouldn't really say it's S tier material. It's just attack and damage bonus. There are better weapons that can give you like just a more attack and damage bonus. So it's definitely not S tier. I would say it's A tier though. It's definitely a decent weapon. And for the final four star, I have the Ballad of the Boundless Blue. It's also the same like base stats as the Wine and Song and the um, Hexion Ring. So it's definitely going to be pretty good. The rest of the passive though is kind of useless. It's just normal and charge attacks, damage bonus, which you're not going to be using. Um, Just for that though, because the passive is like completely useless, at least with the um Hexion Ring and the Wine and Song, the passives are decent or usable at least. But that weapon is just pretty much no passive. So I would say it's higher A tier. Now moving on to the five star weapons. Um, I just say right off the bat, most of them are going to be good or at least usable just for the high base attacks. But yeah, we have the Skyward Atlas, which is super high base attack and then attack as a substat, which is pretty good. And then for the passive is pretty much just elemental damage bonus and then like some extra damage to normal attacks, which is kind of whatever. But either way, just for the super high attack amounts, I would say it definitely deserves S tier. So yeah, I'd say S tier is the right place. We've got Lost Prayers. Average base attack for 5 star, but it's still high for a weapon. The passive though is kind of meh. Um, it's just damage bonus if you're on the field, which probably won't really be for a long time with um, Shuan Yun. So yeah, the weapon as a whole is kind of whatever. The only thing that works is just um, the decent high base attack, but it's not even that high. So I'd say it's B tier. Probably like higher B tier. We've got the Memory of Dust. Um, average base attack for 5 star, but it's still high and a huge attack substat and then even more attack from the passive you can just score hits and then it's gonna give you more attack and if you have a shielder it's gonna be even more but it's still not necessary but yeah just for the huge amount of attack i'd also put that s tier we've got the jade falls um splendor average base attack for five star hp as a substat which is useless um the passive though is kind of useless it can give you some energy um after you use your elemental burst but the main thing you're not gonna be able to create shields with Tron yun so it's just gonna be like 4.5 energy at r1 which is whatever so yeah the passive generally is not good again it's the only thing that works with this weapon is the decent base attack but that's about it so i'll say it's like mid b tier definitely wouldn't really recommend using everlasting moon glow pretty much the same thing i'm not even gonna read all of that but it's the exact same thing it's just different another useless passive you're not gonna be auto attacking with her so you're not gonna be gaining the energy which means the passive is kind of useless so yeah, it's also gonna be mid b tier kagura's verity um average base attack for five star crit damage is sub stat which is kind of meh the passive is also kind of useless though so it's just like elemental skill damage bonus or whatever
whatever, which is not really as good. So I would also put that B tier. Um, a Thousand Floating Dreams is just like Elemental Mastery pretty much and also from the passive, some damage bonus maybe. Either way, it's kind of whatever. So probably C tier. You definitely don't really want to be using this weapon. We've got the Twilight Celeste Remembrance, very high base attack and then crit damage as a substat. Um, the passive is just normal attacks, damage increases. It's, so it's definitely not as good. The only thing, again, the only thing that's good with this weapon is just the high base attack. I mean, it's higher than the rest here. So I'd put it like higher B tier, but either way, you probably won't really be using this weapon. We've got the cash flow supervision, also high base attack, crit rate as a substat. It's going to also give you some attack for the passive, 16%, but it's not really as much. Uh, the rest of the passive is also useless. So it's definitely better than the Tulex Lewis Remembrance, but it's not, you know, it's that much better. So I, it's like the same tier. I just put it a little higher. Yeah, it's just higher B tier. We've got Tome of the Eternal Flow, low base stack for five star. Um, crit damage is a substat, which is not as good. The passive is also generally useless unless you're playing over like Furin or whatever, which you might do in a lot of teams, but either way, it's it's not even that much energy. So it's definitely not really the weapon you want to use. I'd say it's like lower B tier. And now finally, we have her signature weapon weapon very very high base attack it's the highest in the game um i think the only other two weapons with the same base attack like heola's weapon and that's it maybe shinha's weapon i don't remember but yeah it's definitely the highest in the game there are like one or two weapons that are the same base attack and it's also going to give you a small attack substat which is also you know pretty good for sean yun passive is going to buff the rest of your party members plunging attack damage bonus which is good and then it's going to help you out with energy when you do plunging attacks which is also good so it's just energy damage bonus and then a huge ridiculous amount of attack just everything she needs so it's definitely the best in slot at s tier i mean honestly i'm not even going to review this weapon separately usually i do like a separate weapon review for um five star weapons at this time i'm not because like if you can just read it's just made for sean yun literally it's just her you have to plunge to get the bonus like what at this point they should be just putting like characters images on new weapons just like as they do in honkai so it's just like her weapon that's it but um yeah that's her tier list um her weapon is definitely gonna be the best in slot but either way she can use a lot of other good free-to-play weapons as you can see so i would say she's like fairly free-to-play friendly so yeah she's definitely usable as free-to-play either way don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel see you guys in the next video peace